Welcome to Guac Gaming. Guac King here to go over 10 things that players who are new to Red Dead Online need to know, including information about weapons for beginners, some settings, saddles, and some other quality of life improvements. If you go on to like this video, drop me a like and subscribe as that really helps grow the channel. All right, this list is in no particular order. But number one, let's talk about weapons. The first thing that new players don't realize is the Cattleman and Carbine Repeater actually aren't that bad. Players typically want to get away from these guns as fast as possible, which makes sense because they're the most basic guns. But if you upgrade them, they can actually be pretty competitive in PvE and PvP. So it's good to hang on to them until you've saved up enough money to buy a good gun. One of the first guns you should consider getting though is the Lowry's Revolver. The Lowry Revolver is a Navy Revolver variant. You have to have access to GTA Online and you have to complete the serial killer content on GTA, which I have a guide for. And I'll leave a link for that in the description below. But once you find the serial killer in GTA Online, you'll get the Lowry Revolver on Red Dead Online for free. And the Navy Revolver is one of the best sidearms in the game so to get one for free at a level one is a huge advantage now if you don't have access to gta online the navy revolver and the lamat are both good revolvers to save up for the bolt action rifle which unlocks way sooner than the springfield is in my opinion way better than the springfield so that's an easy grab and as far as repeaters go you can make a case for a lot of them but the Lancaster is generally regarded as the best one. All right, number two for new players is pretty straightforward. Finish the storyline. The online storyline isn't the most riveting story ever, but upon completing it, you get a bunch of money, XP, and gold. And gold's gonna be one of the most important things to gather, which brings us into number three, daily challenges. So to access daily challenges, you come here to this menu, and there they are. They're not worth a ton of gold, but on any typical day, some of these challenges are pretty easy to complete. So you may as well take a look at these. And if you get on every day, you could start building a streak. The streak will automatically reset after 28 days. But if you happen to play daily, then you might as well do it because it's a good source of gold. Now between daily challenges and the storyline missions, you should easily be able to afford your first roll, which brings us to number four. What first roll should you get? Now this is gonna largely depend on your actual play style and what you're looking for in the game. But our recommendation for a first role is the bounty hunter role. Now the reason we picked the bounty hunter role is because it's the only role so far in the game that can actually pay you your gold back. Every bounty you do generates gold and then you also have access to at least the first level of legendary bounties by getting the first pass of the bounty hunter role. Not only that but it's actually pretty fun. Gets you all around the map completing bounties. You'll go from town to town and really get a feel of the entire map as you bring bounties in. So that's our recommendation but if you're not into bounties and you don't necessarily care about the gold, the collector role and the trader role are also good roles to start with. With the gene rope map, the collector role it is hands down the most money making role that Rockstar has in the game. But the caveat to that is it takes grinding. So if you're into using the gene rope map and running through the map day in and day out, collecting collectibles, you can make a ton of money. Um, but if you're like me, then you'll find that to be extremely boring. So that's where the trader role comes in. If you like hunting and you like the idea of upgrading your camp, then the trader role is the way to go. Or even if you like PVP, the trader role will be generating money while you're doing whatever else you're doing in the game. Not as much money as the collector, but it's working in the background. So for us, we recommend the bounty hunter first and then the trader role second. All right, number five is a quick quality of life improvement and that's buying things from the catalog. So if you hold down the buy button, you'll buy in bulk and this works great with ammunition and arrows, but it really works for everything that you might be using. If you've got the money to spend and just max out your quantities with all these different ammo types, then you don't have to go find a gun store to buy ammo. You could just go to your lockbox at your camp or any post office around the map, collect your mail, and it'll automatically refill you on all of your ammo types. So don't just go to a gunsmith and buy only what you need. Go ahead and buy it in bulk, and then you can just refill at any post office. All right, number six will save you some time. The Nakadoshis saddle is the best saddle. It seems like a saddle where you weren't supposed to be able to upgrade your stirrups, but since you could get the max level stirrups in conjunction with what the saddle already offers, and you end up with the highest stats you can get from any other combination of stirrups and saddles. It is really OP. It's not the coolest looking saddle, but it absolutely is the best saddle in the game. So I wouldn't even bother with any of these other ones. 
The next tip is crafting big game meat. Now you can get big game meat from panthers, cougars, bears, wolves, and alligators. And alligators being the key one there. So if you just head into Lemoyne and just basically farm alligators, you can collect all the big game meat you need. And then also all around the map, you can find mint, thyme, and oregano. And if you cook seasoned big game meat with mint, thyme, and oregano, then you can get a level four health core, dead eye core, and stamina core respectively. And this is just really helpful when traveling around the map. And the level four health you get from mint can be particularly helpful if you run into griefers. So don't sleep on big game meat. All right, number eight, ability cards. You wanna get these to level three as fast as possible because they don't do much in their early levels. But just throwing on some basic ability cards to buff your Deadeye, health and defense can be really effective. I've seen people forget to equip these and you're just missing out on buffs if you do. So take a look at the ability cards and as you unlock slots, don't leave them open. And they're especially helpful in PVP. So number nine, we'll talk about free roam events. So free roam events pop up on the screen while you're just traveling around in free roam. The same events are happening in all lobbies at the same time. So if you click on it, you'll join the event. They're typically PVP, but sometimes they're PVE. These events can vary greatly on what you're gonna be doing. But if you're looking for something to change the pace of traveling around the map, then these can be pretty fun to jump into. And number 10, PVP. So if you're looking to test yourself against other players, you'll find these icons all throughout the map for different styles of PVP matches, but that's really not the best way to access them. To access PVP the easy way, is you go here in the menu, go down to PVP, and then you could specifically select what you wanna jump into. So you've got races, which are just that, horse races. Takeover series, which are objective-based team games where you're trying to blow up the enemy's base or take over an area. Shootout series, which are more straightforward, which can be team-based or free-for-all, but it's mostly just killing people to get points. And then elimination series, which are almost all free-for-alls, where you only get one life, so once you die, you're spectating until the match is over. But this menu is the best way to access all of them. Don't waste a bunch of time running around a map trying to find the one you like. Okay, that's our 10 tips for new players. If you thought this guide was helpful, drop me a like and subscribe for more Red Dead Online content. Next time you bring the chips, because I got the guac.